Hi, it's Dave. This past week, I had a chance to interview Fabio Faria from Brazil. He has a YouTube channel in Portuguese that focuses on teaching people how to invest in stocks for the long term. His channel has over 200,000 subscribers and he's got quite a loyal following. In this video, I share a highlight of my conversation where we discuss what new investors need to learn the most. If you'd like to watch the full interview, I've uploaded it and linked to it in the video description. First wanted to ask kind of like, how did you get started with YouTube? Kind of what was that moment, that time where you said, you know, I want to do a YouTube channel? Uh, since I was, to, uh, I was born in 1991. It was when I was born. So since I was li little, as like I was, yeah, I think it was 2008 when YouTube started to grow, like the platform. So I was always engaged with YouTube. But I never thought that there was a space in YouTube to talk about investment. So in, I started invested, investing in the stock market here in Brazil in 2008, right before, right after the, the stock market crash. That was all the, the fuzz about it and the, the journals were talking about it every day. So I started investing in the stock market in 2008, but in 2006, 2007, I think it was 2017, I, st I started searching YouTube about, about this stuff, like investing, like stocks, and Brazilians have the, the culture to just invade social medias, right? So at the time, we had some, some channels here with 200,000 subscribers, 300,000. So I saw that there was a space to talk about investments. So I started my YouTube channel uh, back then. So I just tried to, to bring what, what I was doing since 2008 and what, was, uh, what, I, what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong and trying to bring my philosophy for uh, for the audience about the the long term like the shareholder vision not the trader vision the long term the the change between between viewing the stock market as a place to make money to to approach the stock market as a long term place so you can put your money that you are working as an engineering or you're wor working as a as a dentist or whatever. So you can use the stock market to build wealth, to build a long-term portfolio. But I think that what what, what my channel is different from the, the others, I think that I try to get really technical. I think you have the the same approach when you when you analyze Tesla reports, when you open the the, the income statement, you show what is going on, what's not going on. That the kind of approach that I do here in my channel in Brazilian stocks and U.S. stocks as well. Like I'm wondering, how is the situation in Brazil? Like, do you have people who? Um, is it easy to kind of teach a long-term perspective, or do you find it kind of more difficult? A lot of new investors. Like two years ago, we had one million Brazilians invest in the stock market. Today, we have something about three million uh, investors. So it's growing. It's growing really fast. We're having the lowest interest rate of all our history here. We're with 2% interest rate for the short term, the government bonds. So a lot of people are going to the stock market. And I think that a, a natural start for beginners, that was the start I, 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 I like the type of investment that I started was like trading. Because in 2008 we don't we didn't have a lot of information in the internet, so I had to to read a lot of, a lot of books. I tried to read the Alexander Elder's books as the beginning, like trying to understand what was the stock market, like what was trading. And when I changed it from trading approach to a fundamentalist approach to understand that there was companies that that are comp that that are people behind the stocks people inside the companies that try to make uh, the company more valuable, that are working all, all the time. That was when I changed my perspective. It was also when I, I read the book Stocks for the Long Run from Jeremy Siegel. It was a change, uh, game changer book for me. 
And then I was trying to make this approach for the long run. But I think that it's it's normal for new investors to view the stock market as trading and then growing uh, growing up and viewing the stock market for the long run. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a natural way. Yeah. For I, investors. Yeah, I definitely um I actually I see that too. Like in the beginning, you know, people might be tempted to um and people are impatient too. So it's like you do some trading. Um, sometimes it, it goes well, sometimes it doesn't go well, and eventually you maybe you lose some money. <laughs> You're like, yeah, some people drop out, you know, completely. Yeah. But then some people are like, wait a minute, why are other people making money? Or how are they making money? And they might research. And, they, and then they call it lottery, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm wondering, um, I guess, with your kind of investment approach, how many stocks do you typically hold in your own portfolio? I like to have a really, really well diversified portfolio. So I hold, I like to hold ETFs. I like to hold stocks directly. But summing up the stocks in my portfolio here in Brazil and the stocks in my portfolio in the US, it's something, it's a little bit more than 60 stocks. 60 stocks, wow. Yeah. But I saw your your Twitter. I think it was last week that you you tweeted. How does investors that hold a large amount of stocks can really uh, keep up with what's happening in all the companies? But I see like having a well diversified portfolio is like you don't have you you don't have to really do to really know that well all the stocks. The more stocks you hold, the less you really read you really need to know about it because you're you're diversifying and since you have like five stocks you you really have to know really 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 well each one and i think that the the thing about having a diversified portfolio is that no matter how great investor you are no matter how uh how great is your analysis you can always be wrong right the future is filled with uncertainty so things can change really quickly you can make bad decisions so I, I like to have a really well diversified portfolio and to to mitigate that risk right to to reduce the specific risk of each company holding a, a, a lot of companies mm -hmm. yeah yeah it seems to me like you know this concept or idea of diversification versus focused investing like there are pros and cons definitely of both. You know, I think with more of a diversified approach, you're going to probably get, uh, you're capping your returns in some ways for that additional yeah. safety, right? So you're not looking, for example, to 10x your total portfolio, you yeah, know, with a yeah. certain number of years. <laughs> like that's kind of like a little bit out of the question. You're looking for more stable gains, trying to maybe beat like the market, right? By having a better set of of, of stocks. Um, Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. I'm wondering, um, in your kind of own kind of um, investing, have you tried to maybe say, hey, like, I'm researching these stocks, but this one stock or this, these two stocks just like really are just amazing stocks. <laughs> and do you get tempted to say, hey, maybe I should put in like 40 or 50% of my portfolio in, you know, one or two stocks? No, I, I don't like that approach. I like when when I see a a, a company like like Tesla. I started investing in Tesla not so long ago. It was 2018, 80, 2018. and I, that was when you you maybe know better than me. But it was when Tesla started to positive it operating cash flow. I think it was two billion dollars cash flow 2018, but that was when I, I I looked at Tesla and I saw it. Well, I'm I'm starting to build a small, really small piece of my portfolio in that stock because I, I saw a lot of potential. I today I see as well a lot of potential in Tesla, but as it was very riskier company like it's not a company that I a type of company that I usually hold in my portfolio but when I see a company like that I try to 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 hold a small amount of my portfolio it was back then one percent of my portfolio in US so one percent was on Tesla and then the stock just 
ramp it up like 10 times, something like that. Yeah, it was like 10 times from 2008 to today. Until so it it was from the the my Tesla position was from one percent to ten percent of the portfolio, which is a really big position, right? For a diversified portfolio to hold one stock, ten percent of only one stock is kind of concentrated. So as I'm I'm trying to hold the stock for the the long run, like forever, like really like. Warren Buffett style. I don't want to have a really big portion of my portfolio in each stock because I think it's going to be way harder to hold the stock because of its volatility, right? I think that it, it you 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 need to have more conscience about and to be more. I think it's more difficult from the the perspective of the the emotions, right? To have one one stock with 50% of your portfolio representation. Part of me thinks like you could do better than the S&P 500 if you choose maybe like a innovation focused type of ETF or something that, you know, is managed well. Um, mm -hmm. But then like the alternative is like, you know, if you're wanting to pick your own stocks or wanting to build your own portfolio, my question mark is, do you think people can really like, pick a diversified portfolio that's going to outperform, let's say the, the ARK Invest, like the Kathy Wood ETFs, you know? Like, are they gonna really okay. put together 20, 30, 40 yeah. companies that are gonna outperform like, you know, some of the best out there? Yeah, I think that, I don't think it's a problem to, to not perform better than the, than the S&P 500 as well as you have less risk in your portfolio, right? So what I try to, to tell people is that you don't have next necessarily to beat the market, but you have to be, you, you gotta have a risk return adjusted portfolio, right? If I want to have only less riskier stocks than the index, okay, I'll not perform, my performance will be probably lower worse than the the index but i'll have less risk in my in my in my portfolio so i think it's all about that risk and return type of 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 balance in a portfolio i think that I, i'm a huge fan it may seem con con controversy i think but i i'm i'm a really fan of efficient market hypothesis because I, I don't think that the market are too stupid for pricing an asset. But I think that what, what is in the hands of the investors is try to know what risk you're incurring in that investment and know what type of return you're expected to have. And then build your portfolio over this strategy. I think it's something like that. I think that uh, uh, a challenge for a new investor is like I think I see a lot of new investors to just they they just try to to know what returns they can have right. What are the best stocks? What are the stocks that can have really great return? And that's fine. But you can you have to also watch the risk at the same time. I see a lot of new investors only watching the return part and not concerning about risk and i think that you have to to have the two balances i i i prefer to watch first i watch the risk and then i start to think what are the returns the possible returns incur incurring that risk i i think that i like to to have that approach when i'm anal analyzing stock or i'm building a portfolio i like to to balance that well mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's interesting because with with mm -hmm. with with high expected returns, there's always a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk. Risk is uncertainty, right? We can mm -hmm. we can say that. So when you have a lot of uncertainty, you can do really bad as well as you can do really really well. So you have to know what is your what is your objective, right, with that investment? What what are you trying to achieve with that portfolio? What is that portfolio? about because a lot of people ask me i don't know if you probably probably you have a lot of these 
uh, type of question as well. Like, what are what is the best portfolio? What is the what are the best stocks? And what I try to say uh, is that there there's no such a thing as what is the best portfolio. What is the best portfolio for you, right? Because investors have different type of of of, of objectives in objectives in life, right? If I want to preserve my perf my wealth, maybe I'm trying to invest in stocks that are doing that. If I want to 10 10x my portfolio, I'm trying to invest in that type of stocks. You can make a mix of these two type of stocks. Like I I, I like to have that approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um one of the challenges because like for me personally like. I, I understand risk. I'm actually very like risk conscious, like very much. And that's why I actually have like a separate type of um, basket of assets. So I have like some income producing real estate that covers my living expenses. So mm -hmm. when I go into stocks, I can be more risky because it doesn't really yeah. mean that much to me and I'm okay with losing it. And so it allows me to take more risk. But oftentimes when I see people in the stock market, they're so tempted by the big gains that they underestimate the risk. You know, they think like yeah. <laughs> it's going up, up, up. Everything oh, it's always going up, but they don't realize like it's, there is a lot of risk a lot of times, you know, um, to, especially when you expect higher and higher return and you're going for those returns. And that's why like on my channel, I have a hard time recommending certain stocks because my interest is kind of higher risk, but I understand that risk because I'm like, you know, yeah. this stuff is like high risk, you know, you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> and a lot of times I don't feel people in general have the motivation and the discipline to study and research like a stock that has high risk. Because for me, I mean, I, I kind of disagree with the whole efficient market you know, theory a little bit. Like overall, I can see it, it working, but I think there are certain instances and cases in history where um, the media and the overall culture and a lot of the mainstream ideas around a company or a trend oftentimes makes people discount that company or that trend. Like for example, with Tesla, there's so much just FUD and bad media and everyone making up a lot of stories about this company <laughs> when the fundamentals are actually, you know, getting better and better quarter after quarter, 2018, 2019. But you would just by looking at the media, you would imagine this company is like, you know, is um, going to die soon. But I think there's certain times where it's just like um, there is opportunity that if you're really researching and you know how to analyze numbers and, and, and value a company, then you could spot some opportunities. But I agree with you. It's like very high risk. And most people, I feel like they don't account for those risks as much, you know? Um, yeah. I'm curious, like with new investors who are starting out, like what are the top three or four things that you focus on teaching them? What do you think are kind of the most important skills to build? I think that this mindset, like work hard, save money and invest better is the 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 three main factors main factors but when we look at the stock market i really think that a, a great ability is to know the basics of accounting right you have to to know how to read a business uh, uh what what the company is saying to its shareholders right if you don't know accounting you are not going to know how to read that you don't have to be an accountant. You have to know the basics of accounting to to read that. So, I like to to give a lot of content in that way. So, how to read a income statement, how to read a balance sheet, how to read a cash flow, and I also think that knowing these principles, the basics of accounting, is going to improve the the person in in their job, right? Because to know. Uh, the the language of business that is accounting is is a, a good proficiency to have and basically that that's the the fundamentals right and then you have to to start to dig to understand the how how the business is built what are they are trying to achieve what i like to say that it's really good to know where the company came from 
where the company is right now and where the company is what what is the company trying to reach for the long term i think that that general concept is the fundamental of my approaching my analysis approach is tesla your largest position then or is there some other stocks you have larger positions in it became my largest position in us it was one percent and then it became ten percent it's today i think it's something like 12 percent 10 percent it's the the larger portion okay so that's a very large position for for you for you i i imagine right yeah got it yeah. what's um your largest non-us stock position it's called veg veg also has an adr listed in us it's w i no w w e g z y it's it's one of the largest stocks here in brazil it's a company that make electric electric motors for industries like they they make uh th that's the the main the main business that they 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 have and they're like they have 80 percent of brazilian mark uh of the brazilian market share they also they they are also expanding to America to other countries here in Latin America, South America, Asia, e Europe. So it's a it's a great company. I hope that was helpful. I'll link to Fabio's YouTube channel in the video description below. Also, I've got some great interviews and some interesting video topics planned in the coming weeks. So if you'd like to keep updated, consider subscribing to my channel. We're looking at investment topics and the world through different angles, trying to get to the essence of things. All my YouTube videos are also available as an audio podcast. Just search for Dave Lee on investing on your favorite podcast player. I'm also active on Twitter and my handle is HeyDave7. We'll see you in my next video. Thanks.